So if you've been following the channel, you know what I really like to do, and my favorite thing to do in comics is to buy a book, either raw or slabbed, with potential for improvement, do a clean and a press on it, submit it to CGC, and see what grade we get back. And then we either decide to keep the book in the PC, or we sell it. So yeah, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of that this year. I just wanted to just do this almost as an introduction to those videos that I'm going to be doing. There's going to be a lot of them. I've, I've picked up a lot of really cool books to work on. But I just want to, for those of you that are not familiar with my channel or haven't watched my videos, I just want to point out exactly what I do. I mean, if you look at this Batman 423 up there, that was something like an 8.0 or 8.5, I believe, when I bought it raw. And I turned it into a 9.6 with a clean and press. Um, this Incredible Hulk, uh, 9.8 here. 340, this classic cover. It was a 9.6. I cracked it and turned it into a 9.8. Like a thousand dollar jump in value, right? Um, this Basic Spider Man 361 newsstand. It was a raw book that I had. I managed to get that one to a 9.8. Unexpectedly, actually, if you see that video, yeah, I about uh, flew through this ceiling here when I got the 9.8 on that one. This Avengers um, 196, first Taskmaster. It was a mid-grade copy, slabbed. I cracked it and turned it into a 9.6. We also had this Conan uh, 241 newsstand, McFarlane classic cover. I was able to turn a raw book into a 9.8 on that one. There's several others here. I mean, we got the, the Wolverine Limited Series number two. I think this was a 9.0, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> and I turned it into a 9.6 with a clean and a press. And the list goes on and on. Um, there were dozens of books last year that I did something similar with. Some I did videos on, some I didn't. But they're kind of all over my walls here now. And um, I just wanted to preview some of the books I'll be working on. And at the end of the video, I'll show you briefly my process for buying books because my dad sold cars for a living. He owned dealerships. And he always told me that you make your money when you buy the car, not when you sell the car. So if you don't pick up the right cars at the right price, Profit is not going to happen. So it's the same way with comic books. You got to be able to spot a good candidate for a good upgrade. You got to know what to look for on um, what defects can be improved, especially on slabs. And you also got to buy them at the right price. Sometimes you'll get several bidders on a book on eBay, for example, and it's just not a good buy. You're not, there's no money there, there's no value, and you just pass. So you need to set limits on your buying. And you just set your price and you come in and you bid on it and if you don't get it you move on to the next book there's literally billions of comics in the world there's always going to be another one to buy don't get married to a book that you see online that you want to buy set a price where you know you can make money worst case scenario or at least break even and you're going to do just fine so on the probably 20 books i've bought so far this year to work on to do videos on maybe even 30 somewhere in lots I probably bid on 300 books to get 20 or 30. So I've got like a 10% success rate, but I know I'm almost close to 100% confident on every single book that I buy that I'm at least going to break even and have a book in my collection that can at least maintain its value and go up in value possibly over time. So we don't ever want to lose money in this hobby, right? I mean, it's okay to spend a little bit of money sometimes for learning experience, but you know, for the most part, we want to have fun doing this, enjoy the hobby, but at the same time, make some money, gain some value, build our collections, build an asset, right? And that's what kind of this is all about. So let me just give you a sneak peek of some of the books that I bought. There's a Raw X-Men 95 that I picked up, which has a lot of potential. Very cool book. This one I've never had before, but <laughs> who doesn't love that cover? This one potentially could be high grade. It's something like a mid-grade 7.5, something like that. Now it has a fingerprint here, which we might focus on in the video. But I think I can get that to a 9.2, maybe, something like that. Uh, we got a G.I. Joe 21, which is a silent issue. It's the first print. I also picked up a third print as well that I'll probably work on. But this first print is high grade. I'm expecting to get 9.0 plus on that one uh, with uh, a little bit of work on it. Um, we have a Spotlight, Marvel Spotlight 32, first, I believe, Spider-Woman. I believe that's first Spider-Woman, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> very cool book. Going to be working on that one as well. 
A um, book I've had around for a while that I haven't gotten to yet is a high-grade copy of Amazing Spider-Man 42, which I believe is the face reveal of Mary Jane, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think this could be an 8.0, 8.5, something like that, um, if, we, uh, if we get lucky, because there is a scratch or something right here. But yeah, that'll be a fun one. It's a Silver Age. I try, I'm trying to get silver, bronze, and copper age books, and maybe even a couple ultra-modern books to work on as well. This one I've had for a while and I haven't got a chance to work on because I didn't think my skills were good enough to work on the book yet. Something like a 3.0, I would guess now, and I'm hoping to get it like a 4.5, 5.0. It's got some issues, but it's still a beautiful Holy Grail book. I mean, look at this, the way they did the lettering on this. That's just awesome. And of course, being annual number one, Amazing Spider-Man from 1964, that's a pretty awesome pickup right there for me. I got a really excellent price on this one. I guess a lot of people were scared off by the wrinkling on here. It's very crinkled up, but I think I can get all that out. And uh, I got it for like, at the time, it was like 700 under fair market value for what I thought the grade was. Now, the, the prices have come down, but I still, even if I bought it at that same price today, I think I'd do okay. You know, I might be able to make 500 or to $1,000 on this book um, if I get lucky with the grade. Not get lucky, but, you know, gets the grade bump that I hope for. So I also picked up some slabs. This one I've had a while. Um, it's Amazing Spider-Man 315 newsstand, and all it has is this the most faint dust shadow or sun shadow across the top, and I think I can whiten that and get it off. Otherwise, the book is flawless. There is not a tick on this book. No color breaks anywhere, sharp corners. This is a 9.8 without that on it, I believe. So I'm going to crack that one, and we'll do a video on getting rid of a sun shadow on the, on the top. You know, I'm trying to theme the videos I'm working on a little bit. So we can focus on one thing and try to tackle one thing at a time rather than just everything all at once. Doing something similar on this 9.6 Amazing Spider-Man 328. Oh, it's a new stand. And uh, this one has some light tanning on the back. If you look right along here, I'm going to try and work on tanning in that video. Um, I also have a, I bought, I did a video on it. I bought a whole bunch of um, Transformers books at once, and I got a really good deal. I, I think the average price was like $20 or $25. So yeah, I picked up a 7.0 number one, basically for $20, $25, first print. And um, I think this one could be high grade. Uh, every single book on there obviously hadn't been pressed. So that's gonna be fun to be able to get a Transformers one, uh, maybe even up to a 9.0 or something like that. You know, I love Transformers, as you know. And the same thing on this one. This was part of that lot. I'm just showing it because, I mean, I just got to show that cover. <laughs> First Devastator. And then we've got uh, Black Cat. A 7.5, which I think could be an 8.5. If I'm, if I, it's an older slab. I think I can get this to 8.5 maybe. It, it wasn't quite as good when I got it in as I hoped. But I think I can get a grade bump. It'll be fun to work on regardless. And now, getting us some more... Big books. <laughs> not that that's not a big book. Um, this one is just absolutely gorgeous. I always love this book right here. And uh, you know, it's first appearance of Gwen Stacy. It's got some issues. And the main thing that holds this one back is I think there's a stain right here. I think it's capped at a 5.0 because of a stain and a couple other things on it. And I think we could clean this up and maybe even get like a 6.5, 7.0 on that book. And that would be a pretty big jump on that book book I've never had before that I just recently got. In fact, in the last couple of days it came in, maybe even yesterday, or was it this morning? Anyway, regardless, um, I've never had this book before, but gorgeous Neil Adams cover. And uh, this one has a ton of potential. It's got the stain right here. We're going to work on some stains, uh, a little bit more significant stains on this one. I think this one could be a 7.0, even maybe even squeak out a 8.0 on that one, and that would be a big jump. Okay, and if you want to work on a really, really old book, not that that annual a minute ago wasn't old, um, we've got this 1964 Amazing Spider-Man number 18. It's already, I mean, this is a really old slab. I think this book was graded in 2002, early, early in CGC. But it looks like at least a 9.0, if not a 9.2. It's obviously never been pressed before, but this book looks tremendous. I could even see this somehow getting a 9.4, and that would be a huge, huge... I mean, you start getting in the Silver Age Spider-Man Spider books, and you get in the 9.4 plus range, you're talking about big money on pretty much all the books. But yeah, this one's pretty awesome. You know, it's first Ned Leeds, too. This book had a spike at some point recently, but yeah, um, really cool book. This is one of my all-time favorites, of course. If you've been following the channel, you know. First full cover with Venom on it. 
you know, the 315 had the little tiny one on here, but the full body and everything, first time is 316. This book has one little bend right here that is making it a 9.6. Well, it's about that long. And I think that made it a 9.6. The book has one tick otherwise right here. And I think this is a 9.8. I'm like 80% sure that when I get rid of that bend, this is a 9.8, and that is huge. I don't have... I think my highest grade on this book before I bought this one was 9.0. So I'm just thrilled to have a chance of getting an ultra high grade. I already have it. I mean 9.6, but I'm going to go for the 9.8. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so now the big boy. <laughs> this one... I'm, I want to get to the point where I start delving into really high dollar books. I want, I, kind of this year will be spent working on some mid, you know, some big books, but not like big risks. Like I'm not spending thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, they're three, four hundred dollars, maybe even up to a thousand almost on some of them. But I invested in this book uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and I got, and I, I couldn't believe when I saw it online. I'm like. Yeah, it's a little bit of a stretch, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna show you right here. 7.5 Amazing Spider Man 129, first appearance of Punisher. But when I was looking at this book, I'm like, there's nothing on this book. Why is it a 7.5? And then I noticed, okay, there's rust on the staples, and that is the note on this. I think with a heat overlay press and a couple other techniques, a lot of that rust is gonna come off. I think this is at least an 8.5. If it wasn't for the rust or anything like that, and I was just looking at this book and it wasn't a 129, I kind of just was being completely, you know, unbiased and everything. I would say this is 9.6. I mean, I don't think I'm stretching here. Look at the spine. Look at the corners. Anyway, that's a sneak peek. We don't need to go too far into it, but yeah. Never owned this book. Very proud to have it. It's probably going to be a PC book no matter what grade comes back on it. But this one is going to be a blast to work on. I'm going to be very careful, meticulous, nervous, but we're going to do that one down the road. I'm going to work on all the other books you've already seen and a few others before we get to this one. So it might be a few months before I get to this one or make a video on it. Um, I don't want to just jump into this one right now. I want, to, I want to practice a little bit more before I start getting into books like this. So I'm going to put this one in the vault and... <laughs> um, Keep it for safekeeping, and we'll get to it soon down the road. Now, we're just going to switch over to the computer now, and I'm just going to briefly pick a couple books and just show you my process for buying, because as I was saying, we make our money when we buy the books. There's certain things you want to look for, and there's certain things you want to avoid. And we can use graders notes when they're available, and they will help us, but mainly it's just visually getting a ballpark grade in our heads of what a book will look like after it's clean and pressed. And then you compare the two values and you're like, okay, I can make some money here or at least gain a book from my PC and, not, and, and get a higher grade than I would have gotten if I just spent the money otherwise. Like uh, maybe I can get a 9.0 and pay a 7.0 price or something like that. So let's get on the computer and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so I'll just give you my process for targeting a particular book, finding them for sale on eBay, and then how I go about deciding which books to bid on, buy, whatever, and which books to pass up on. So the first thing I want to know before I find a book is what should I be paying for a high-grade copy. So what I do is I find the book. Let's say we're doing Amazing Spider-Man 328. And what I always do is if I'm looking for a potential 9.8 candidate, I will look at what they sell for graded as a 9.4, and I'll use that price to figure out what should I be paying. Now the last sale on a 9.4 and this book was $61. You know, the last uh, 12 months it's been about 55, so you know, we'll call this a 55 or $60 book. We're hoping it's better than a 9.4 when we get it, but in case it did come back a 9.4, even a 9.2, are we not gonna lose too much value or much money? So this is, we're trying to set our cap. We know we're not gonna do great if we buy all our books at the cap, but we also know that we're gonna win some of these bids way under what our cap is. So what really matters is the average over time, not the exact amount you pay for this particular book. So if I 
typically pay 60% of my cap on average on all my books, I'm going to do pretty good there. I'm even making money a lot of the time if it comes back a 9.2 or 9.4. Okay, so on this book I would say we'll figure $20 for CGC fees, another 5 for shipping. So let's say it's a $55 book. So we probably don't want to be paying more than about 30 bucks for this book, right? Now that we have a number in, our, in mind, let's go ahead and go to eBay and I've already punched in a search for this book. Now you may be wondering what that is on the right side of your screen. This over here is my grading tool that I created. It is completely free to anybody out there. I'll put a link in the description to it. So, okay, so what I use this for is I'm not necessarily, I don't even really use the thing anymore, honestly, because I've gotten, I've used it so much and I've looked at so many books that I kind of can just ballpark a grade immediately almost, but I do still use it on more mid-grade and lower grade books. Uh, because I find it very helpful. To, it'll get me within usually one grade point of that way I can make it a more informed bid on the books. So basically I'm not going to go over this because if you just go to the grading tool there's a video on there. It'll explain exactly how this thing works. And you just basically go through seven key areas of the book. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you just give your interpretation of the defects on that area of the book. And I explain over here to the right, off screen here, exactly what, um, I think it's six categories of defects, like negligible, tiny, minor, moderate. Anyway, I'm gonna use this today, but I'll probably only use it on the slabs later. But I didn't want that to sit over on the right hand side of the screen and you just wonder for the next five minutes what that is. So I thought I would go ahead and explain it. It is my grading tool. And this thing down here to the bottom, this big colorful chart, is max defect level because after you put it use the chart up here to come up with your preliminary grade say it comes up with 8.5 you got to come down here and look at your caps so let's say there's a one inch tear on the book but otherwise it's an 8.5 well and one inch tear you can only have a 7.0 or lower so we would say that that book is capped at 7.0 so that's the last stage of the process okay so let's just go ahead and take a look at a few books for right now for this we're not going to look at slabs. We're just going to look at raw books. There is an abundant supply of this book. It's a popular cover, but you can still get it at a reasonable price. So the first thing I like to do is go down to the uh, max amount I want to pay. And I know I don't want to pay more than $31, but I'm going to put $35 in there just in case I happen to see a perfect copy at 33 And I'm like 90% sure it's a 9.8. I would still maybe bid a little bit more on that one. But now we're, we're filtered for only books under $35. So that will help, you know, us from having to scroll through so many books. Now it shows that there's 173 results. Well, I know it's probably less than that. There's probably only 20 or 30 candidates max for us to look at. So, you know, depending on the book and the rarity of it, you know, you're, you may only find two books available right now. You might find zero books available in high grade. You might find a hundred books available in high grade. So for this book, I expect we'll probably get five or six books to look at. So what I do is I just, I filter them. So what I do is I just go down the list here. This one says, they say it's an 8.0, but I've seen people say 8.0 is just because there was a bend on it and I can't see any defects here. So I go ahead and add that one to our list to look at. It's got a really good buy it now price. You'd be amazed, you can get some deals still, especially for ones that are just po posted. I've gotten books like this one for $7 and it turned out to be a 9.8. It's not unheard of. So don't just think because it's a buy it now 12 that it's not a quality book because it could very well be. They just could not, they could be looking at Go Collect or something and just seeing that the price is, it's selling for $9. And so that's what they listed as without knowing that this, of how high, some people can't grade. You know, a lot of people are not good at grading. It may be a perfect copy. They think it's $9, but really it's a $200 book after it's slabbed, right? So you know, we, we want to snatch that one up, right? So let's go ahead down the list. Let's just see if there's any more. Uh, bidding is usually a really good way to get books. Uh, that one, I can't tell. Look for high grade in the title. Usually that'll give it away. Sometimes you'll be able to see like a big crease or something in the picture and you can avoid it. But I'm just going to pull a few up here. I'll look for auctions. Let's let's focus on auctions for a second, just because that's usually where you're going to find your books. I did that one. 
This one says high grade. That could be a good one. Let's just pull a few up. That one you can kind of see probably isn't good, but I'm going to pull it up anyway and show you why. Don't discount getting books in lots. Sometimes you'll find a hidden gem in lots. I think I've gotten a three, uh, Incredible Hulk 340 in a lot of three books that was kind of just hidden away. I've got a t-shirt one time that was listed as a t-shirt that actually came with a Amazing Spider-Man 40. It was a 4.0 or 4.5, but I got the thing for 80 bucks and the t-shirt was worth 25. So I basically got a Amazing Spider-Man 40 for like 55 bucks. And look up what a 4.5 or 5.0 goes for, and you'll see how good of a deal I got on that book. I actually have featured it on this channel if you can find it. Here's another one here. Um, that Sometimes we want to look at slabs, but I actually have another book set aside for us to do that with. Okay, so that's enough for now. So we'll just go through each of these books, and we can now we can further filter them. And I just take a look at the spine, first of all, because that is a dead giveaway. If you see several, if I see more than three ticks, I know it can't be a 9.8. So I just go ahead and, and click it away. That one cannot be a 9.8. I filtered it. This one cannot be a 9.8. It's gone. Now I'm focusing on a high grade books right now. I, I want to be certain that it's at least a 9.4, but has a chance of 9.8. I'm being very picky right now. If this was a higher dollar book, we wouldn't be so picky because a 9.0 could be a lot of money. But right now we're looking for 9.8 candidates. That's the whole purpose of this. This one might be a possibility here. It has one little tick that I can see. The corners look sharp. And it's a 10.99 buy it. Now sometimes I gamble on a book. If it's like a third of the price I'm willing to pay, I'll gamble on it. I've gotten some really quality books from Buy It Nows. In fact, this one, I might just buy it now right now. You know, if I were in the market for this book right now. This one actually, I'm surprised we found one like this making this video but this one has a has strong possibilities now one thing on on some books and this book in particular if you look at the black area of the book on the far left of the spine and you see little micro white areas that's a good sign that there's probably a tick there you can just see the hint of it so there's probably one two three little ticks but if the book was perfect otherwise on this book you know, and a back is always a good indicator. Some books with black covers on the back, I'll just, I won't even look at the front cover. I'll just immediately go to the the back. And if I see 15 ticks there on the black, I know it's not a 9.8, so I move on. This book I would buy. In fact, I might add this one to my cart right now because I might think about buying this one <laughs> after this video is done because the price is right. So, yeah, let's look at another one. Avoid books with very bad pictures. If they're blurry, they might be blurry for a reason. I rarely will buy a book with blurry photos. Yep, see right there if you look close up? Couldn't see that in the blurry photo, but there you go. Not going to buy that one. Yep, that one's got a little tear on the bottom right. I move on to the next one. So the, the point here is if I find a book that looks perfect online and it get, comes in and it's not perfect, at least maybe it could still get 9.4 and I could just stick it, keep it as a raw book. And maybe one day it'll be a $500 book and it'll be worth slabbing at that point. So yeah, this one's torn up on the spine, so we don't want it. This one, we couldn't see it. This is the one I was talking about earlier that you could kind of see it from the preliminary picture. You can filter. You'll get pretty good at filtering. And just tip, um, I'm on Chrome right now. I actually... Um, I zoom in up to 175% on my computer and then when I hover over it, it shows the much larger view on my screen so I can see the detail much better. So, you know, at, at the standard 90 or 100% zoom, you're not going to see this kind of detail when you hover over it. If I find if I go above 175%, it gets too big and you're just like seeing a little sliver. So that's just, uh, that's been very helpful since I started doing that. And so this lot here is not going to work. I mean, look at the staple uh, wear. I could just tell from here. Now, be careful of polybagged books as well. That hides a lot of damage, polybags. This one's out of the polybag, looks like. So we can take a closer. See, big tick there. 
and a bunch of ticks. So this one is a decent book. This one could definitely get 9.2, but that's not what I'm looking for right now. So we move on to the next one. Okay. Little little piece missing out of the corner up there. If you could, if you saw it on the top right there, that's a telltale sign. Can't tell anything from the back on this one. The photo is kind of washed out. But this one looks good. And on some books, I would go after this one if I could get the bid lowered up. But look at the high bid they've got. Now, if I was the only bidder, this might not be a bad deal. If, But seeing that corner missing, I'm definitely not going to go for this one. But if that wasn't there, I might go for this one. Spine looks pretty good, except for that one tick. That probably might be a deal breaker, but I've seen 9.8s with ticks like that. But yeah, if you're seeing two ticks like that in the pictures, there's probably five others that you can't see in the picture. So um, yeah, so that one was it for our 328. Now, out of all those we just looked at, what did we find? One to buy? One and one maybe? So it, it's, a, it's a frustrating process. You can go through 200 books and not find one 9.8 candidate. Well, just try again next Monday. After Sunday it goes around and all the books have sold, There'll be a whole new crop of books that show up. And if you're targeting a book, just be patient. It's gonna, it might take you five, six, seven, eight weeks to find five or six 9.8 candidates. Then you've got your five 9.8 candidates. Then you filter those once they come in, keep some raw, and you submit five, you get two 9.8s, and you're a happy camper, right? And that's pretty much how it works with this, <laughs> the whole game here. So let's just briefly go through some slabs as well. So I pulled up, I've actually targeted this book before, and I got it at like as a 7.0 and turned it into like a 9.4. So I know something about this book pretty well. So let's just target slabs. Now, um, generally I see something in like the 7.0, 8.0 range is probably the sweet spot because sometimes those books can be turned into a 9.0 plus. Whereas if you find a 5.0, there's probably major stuff on it. It's probably not going to ever be a 9.0. Not saying it couldn't be possible. I'll probably do that at some point. I'll get lucky. But for now, let's just say, let's look at 7.0s in that area. Now, this one has a buy it now offer. I'm not going to look at the pricing, but I know that's overpriced. But let's just assume that's not overpriced and it's like a bidding. I'm going to go ahead and look at that one because there is a limited supply of this book. Same thing here. I'm just We're just going to look at them. The effort here is not to try and buy this book right now. What we're just doing is looking for candidates that would be good to crack if we got a good price on them. Not good pictures on the 6.0 or I would pull that one up. I'll look at the 6.5 here. Yeah, the 6.0. I mean, exceptional eye appeal, That that's a good sign. I mean, if they're putting that on there and they're being honest, and then there could be a reason this is a 6.0. There could be a stain or something we could get out. And uh, let's just get one more here. Surprise! there's not any bidding going on. See, there's no availability right now in this book when normally there's a much better availability. Okay, let's go ahead and just look at the ones we got. And this is where the grading tool can come in. Is we can just, what we can do is we can look at this spine here and say, okay, that's moderate damage. I go over to the right, put moderate. You're going to like this part of it, trust me. Um, Bottom right corner there has a crease, not too bad. Um, is it minor? Let's look at the back corners. Corners look pretty nice on this book. There's some blunting there though. So it's probably minor, but a little bit more than minor. So I'm gonna add on a little bit here. The edges look pretty good on this book. I don't really see anything that just stands out to me. Okay, that edge right there you can kind of see is bent over a little bit. And there's a little, could be a chip there. So we're going to go minor on it just to start. We might, that might be a little bit more than minor, but we can't really see, but that's a good starting point. Spine is beat up pretty good. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay. Bindery, we're going to put tiny on this book. Spine was moderate. Sorry, I went out of order there. Um, now the next thing we look at is the staples. Are there any tears? I can kind of see right there that there's not tears necessarily, but it's at least got big ticks on the staples. You might be able to see on the back. Yeah, see how that staple is just not sitting right? So I'm going to go minor, at least on the staples. And then the cover itself, what does it look like? Um, let's see. And make sure if you've already done the spine, we don't want to count that big tick right there because that's part of the spine. Yeah, there's kind of like a soiling or slight tanning to this book. 
I'm not seeing any other major damage that's showing up on photos, but you can just kind of see that general dinginess. Like this book hasn't been cleaned. See how there's soiling there? That's actually a good sign when you see that. That might be even a tiny stain there on the bottom right. So I, I think this cover is somewhere between minor and moderate, if not moderate. Um, so I'm going to go maybe, yeah, let's just go moderate. Because I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's a little stain there. And they're pretty harsh on tanning. Oh, and there's some creasing there. See around the free? See those creases? So we're definitely moderate on the cover. And then the pages. Well, it's white pages. So we're going to assume there might not be anything on the pages. Maybe it's just negligible or tiny. Um, maybe it's somewhere between off-white to white. But we just don't know. But we're going to assume there's something on the pages. Okay, so based on our grading tool, this is a 7.0 book. Well, there you go. It's a 7.0 book. Spot on, right? Can't do much better than that. So, okay, so this is how we use the tool. You see this yellow area over here on the, here on the right? Now, that's our pressed rating. You know, that's what we think this book could be after we press it. So can we improve this spine? Maybe a little bit, but you look at those ticks there. We're not going to get it off moderate. Um, and actually, I'm going out of order. There's nothing we can do about bindery. There's really nothing we can do about the corners here. The edges, eh, there's a bend on the back. So maybe we could get the edges down to like tiny. It just depends on what that chip is back there. But let's say we got rid of all the bends and it's a perfect edge. Okay, or close to perfect. We'll call it tiny. Um, spine, we said we couldn't do anything about. Staples, not really anything we can do. You can kind of see that damage on the spines. There's nothing we can do about that. We can clean it up slightly, but we're not going to get it off minor damage. The cover has the creases on the back, and that's probably going to leave us at moderate, even just that little bit there. And But if we did get all the tanning out and everything and, and whiten this book, we could possibly get it to where those creases on the back are considered minor. But let's say it's somewhere between minor and moderate, right? And then the pages, let's say there's nothing we can do about that. They're already white pages. Maybe we improve them a little bit. So the cap on this book, according to my grading tool, and actually I should have done that over on the right. Um, <laughs> I just changed everything on left. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can rebuild this on the right if you want. And that. the reason I keep it separate is because you might want to refer back and forth. But yeah, I should have done that. But I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to redo it for this video. It does. It's not. It's not worth it. So yeah. So we're we're looking at probably best case scenario we could hit an 8.0 on this book. So we just do the the numbers. You know, I would actually say 7.5 just to be safe. So would turning a 7.0 and a 7.5 and it's not even a sure bet be a good investment for us? It wouldn't. So I would not pick this book. I would move on to another one. Even if the price was, if the price was exceptionally good for a 7.0, I might buy it. But it's not because I'm going to crack it. It's, it's just because I'm getting a good price on it. So the next book we got is, let me try and pick one's a little bit better. That one's beat up pretty good. Let's see if there actually is one. This one has possibilities. There's a pretty significant tick there, but it's a lot of soiling and stuff too. Now this one could be a decent candidate just because it's a 6.5. This looks like it could get to like an 8.0. So I would take a close look at this one. There is a crease up at the top, or right, top right there. Let's see what else we got here. This is a 6.0. This looks better than a 6.0, doesn't it? Okay, so something else we want to do here. I've got the CGC verification. Let's type in this number right here. 416-594-7011 and see what the graders notes are. Light staining to cover, moderate creasing to cover. That's a bad sign. We don't want creasing because creasing means color breaks. Moderate spine stress lines to cover. Okay. It says moderate, but it could be moderate in the white part of the book, and we can repair that. So yeah, um, except for the creasing part, let's see if we can find the creasing. You know, I've, I've seen some graders put creasing in their notes, and there actually is no creasing on the book, so I don't just take it for granted there actually is creasing on this book. But I'm not seeing it. That could be a bend right there, but it's not creased. There's no color break. 
So don't just believe graders notes. Graders make errors. If you got really good pictures, find it. Find the creasing. Where is it? Usually when they say that, it's like a corner. So there could be creasing in the white part of this book that we can't see, but that could actually be cleaned up and no longer be creasing. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but what I'm saying is, is if you don't see any creasing at all, you might gamble on this book just because it's a 6.0. Because, um, Or if this creasing said bends instead, moderate bends to cover. That would be awesome for us. We can get rid of the staining. We can fix all the bends. We can clean up the spine. This book, who knows? This could be a 9.0 sitting here waiting to be purchased, right? And let's say this was a bid and you could get it for right at fair market value of a 6.5. I might gamble on this book just because I know I know this is an 8.5 if I clean it up. Right? I'm I'm pretty confident on this book right here now that I'm looking at it. Now it's way overpriced. Guy wants $200. I know this is not a $200 book at that price. He has an offer thing here, but I think he's so far out in left field I wouldn't even really make an offer on this book. But let's say we did. This would be this looks like a possible good candidate. So let's just use our grading tool and then we'll wrap this video up just to show you what I'm talking about here. Okay. Moderate spine. He says there's moderate. And when you see those notes, there's a reason I use the word moderate up here. Because if the notes say moderate, you got to go with moderate. Um, I'm out of order here again, but, you know, binary we can't really see. But I always just err on the side of caution and just say at least tiny. If you can see a tiny little tear, I'll put it at minor. Corners, pretty sharp on this book, right? I'm not seeing any huge issues. Maybe a little blunting there, but that looks like that could be cleaned up. Same thing there. I can You can make that a little bit better. You can see there's kind of a crunch there. I bet that I could clean that up. So right now I'm going to go with mm, somewhere between minor and moderate, but maybe even moderate. Uh, Man, I'm in the wrong spot again. I'm like, you think I would know how to use my own tool, right? <laughs> Just go line by line. It doesn't really matter. There's the crease right there, by the way. See that in the white? I can fix that. I can clean that up. You might, It might be a faint little line there, but I think once you whiten this book, that's going to virtually disappear. So there's that could be our creasing right there. And it's not color breaking because it's not in color. Even though technically it is breaking something, you can still see it probably. But if I have to hold it up to the light or get it at angles, I don't call it moderate anymore. I call it minor and negligible. Okay, so on edges, not seeing much. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. They're staining somewhere on this book, or they wouldn't have said stains in the comments. So I'm thinking there's a stain that's a certain size, like if you look at our stain chart here. Um, four quarters of staining would cap us at 6.0. I'm thinking there is like four quarters of staining. So it could be all along this bottom right here. That could be like water marks. And water marks are really easy to get out of a book. It's actually one of the easiest stains to get out. So I'm guessing we're capped at 6.0. So what does that tell me? If, uh, if he's on moderate... Could be somewhere between moderate and extensive on it because of the staining. He could even go extensive on that amount of staining, you know. And then staples, maybe a little bit of a crease there. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a tick on the staple that can be cleaned up. Let's go minor on the staples. Pages, what were the pages? White pages. So we don't know anything about that. So this book looks like a 7.0, even with the staining. So this might be one of those undergraded books, like even with the stains, I'm not seeing this as a 6.0. I think this is a 7. I think he should have graded this as a 7.0. That's just my opinion, just glancing at the book. Now, I don't have the book in my hands, so. But this one right here, if it was the right price, I might watch this one just to see if he comes down on his price. Add it to your watch list. And maybe even make an offer of what you think is a good price. You have to do that math yourself. This is a good candidate for a grade bump. This one is what you're looking for right here. I am pretty confident this is at least a 9.0. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of going out on a limb right there, but I would almost think this is a 9.0 plus. I could see this being a 9.4 after you get the stains out if possible. I really do. Okay, so that, I just happened to find some good books there for us to, uh, to learn on this um, process. So I hope it's been helpful. 
And if you have any questions at all or I missed something or whatever, <laughs> please uh, comment below. and I'd love to hear from you. But yeah. So yeah, I hope this video has given you a really good sneak peek into my process from buying. You know, and then we're going to go through a bunch of books. So stay tuned on this channel if you want to see me go through this process. Now, I might not go through the process in this detail. I'll probably just, you know, receive the books because if I were to go through this process, it ta I, would, I have to go through 100, 200 books to find one. If I tried to record every single book I was looking at or thinking of bidding on, that it just uh, it wouldn't be feasible. I, I would do nothing but that. And I would just be sifting through editing videos all day long. So, but that's why I'm making this video. So you kind of have an idea of my process and I'll do more videos like this in the future. Maybe some bigger books that I'm looking for where there's only a handful of copies available. I'll make detailed videos of the buying process. But for now, you know, the videos that I'm making, I'm going to, I think I'm going to call it comic flips where I find a book, I get it in shipping. I do a video on unboxing it, then the whole process on cleaning and pressing it and then submitting it to CGC, and then I, I'll wait for the books to come back to finish the video, and we'll get to reveal the grade, and then talk about what we would possibly sell it for, or whether we're keeping it in the PC, but how much value we gained is the main point. Whether we're actually flipping it or not doesn't matter. What kind of value did we gain from the endeavor, and how the hours we put into it, or minutes sometimes, in uh, improving these books? Because that's what it's all about. It's about improving the books. It, it's a lot of fun and a blast, and I hope all of you consider getting into it out there. If you're not doing it yourself, you can find a good presser, but you could do this whole same process, except just outsource the, uh, you know, you could find the books, crack them, send them to a presser, and then submit it yourself. You just got a little extra fee, but you also don't have the costs of pressing and the, the time and expense of learning how to do this, because this is not something you can just pick up overnight and be decent at as far as cleaning and pressing. It takes months. I've been doing it about a, almost a year now and I'm still, I learn something every time and I'm not perfect at it. My big skill in this, honestly, as I said earlier, is, is finding books, is finding the right books to work on. That's what I'm decent at. I'm not great. I'm not, I wouldn't say, I'd say I'm a mediocre presser and cleaner, <laughs> but pretty good at picking books to actually work on to get the max grade bump. So don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, improvecollecting.com. And I'll be sending out information like this, more updates on my grading tool, any other apps or tools that I'm in development on, whatever those happen to be down the road. And I won't spam you, but I do giveaways to my newsletter. So if you're a member, you'll just be signed up for giveaways that happen periodically. So if nothing else, sign up just to get in the giveaways if you want. I'm fine with that. So thanks again for watching. and We'll see you in the next video.